Hello, my dear friends. I have a terrific question on this week's Parsha. The Torah describes <coughs> Parsha's Achrei Mos, the Avod of Yom Kippurim. Aaron HaKohen entered, was instructed to enter the Beis HaMikdash, or the Mishkan at that time, once a year, <coughs> and he would enter into the first into the Kachim, and then the Kachim Kadashim, and go in and out, maybe change his clothing. So a whole long discussion of what was done on Yom Kippur. And the Gemara, the Mesechus Yuma, takes every single pasuk in the beginning of the parsha and dissects it and tears it apart and then the, and you have an entire mesechta that's built on on the psukim in the beginning of this week's parsha now the torah gives us an introduction to this uh, description of the avoda of of the kohen gadol on yom kippur which is such a, a moving experience that the Kohen Gadol would go into the base Amikdash and do the, bring the Avodah and atone for the sins of the Jewish people. What is that introduction? The Torah says, Vayidaber Hashem al-Moshe, Achrei Mos Shnei V'nei V'aron. HaKadosh Baruch Hu spoke to Moshe after Aharon's two children passed away. You know that two parshas earlier in Parshas Shmini, the Torah describes how the children of Aharon, Nada and Avihu, decided they wanted to go into the Besam, into the Mishkan and bring a, a carbon that they were not authorized to bring and a fire came down from heaven and consumed their souls. So the Torah here introduces the Avodah of Yom Kippurim by telling us this was Acharemos, this was after Aaron's two children died. God told Moshe Rabbeinu to tell instruct Aaron, Bezos Yavol Aaron Akash. This is how Aaron should enter into the into the holy and the holy of holies. My question is, why introduce something of such pro- profound significance, such tremendous depth, such a the, the most powerful religious experience was when the Kohen Gadol would enter into the holy of holies. Why introduce that with Achare Mos B'nai Aaron? That is such a, a morbid and depressing way, depressing way to make the introduction. Furthermore, the the children of Aaron, Achrei Mos implies that they had just died. They just died, and then the next day, God tells Moshe, this is what you should tell Aaron. It wasn't a day later, it was months later. The children of Aaron died in the Nisan, during the Shemona Shimei Miluim. And here, this is right before Yom Kippur. God is telling Moshe what Aaron, how Aaron, the Avoda in, on, on Yom Kippur. So what does it mean, Achrei Mos? So on that question, I have an answer, because... When a, a parent loses a child, that is the ultimate tragedy. It's it's difficult to lose parents, difficult to lose a spouse. But when you when a parent loses a child, that's the order of nature is reversed. Children are should be burying the parents, not but parents, parents burying the children. And f- f- even though seven, six months had transpired from the time that Aaron's children had passed away. It was it, for Aaron. It was as if it was the, still the, the next day. It was Achrei Mos. It was as if the the very following day he was receiving instructions from Moshe because that experience of losing his child was, had such a, a profound impact on on Aaron that it was it was still alive in his eyes. They, my kids, they just died. They just passed away. Okay, so that I think it, it explains why it says Achrei Mos even though it transpired months earlier. But my, my question remains, why introduce the, the, the Avodah of Yom HaKippur with such a, a morbid and depressing opening line? So Rashi says that the reason is because God told uh, Moshe to, to, to tell Aaron, you know, look, what, your children went in when they were unauthorized and therefore they died. You have to make sure you do the Avodah properly so nothing should happen to you. Okay, I understand that, but that could have been, that that discussion could have taken place in Parsha Shmini when Aaron's children died. There, God could have told Moshe, tell Aaron, when you go, you have to do it the right way. But here, this is a, a new Parsha, and it, it's describing one of the most magnificent um, episodes of, 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 the Jew, of, of, of the Jewish calendar. It, it just seems so inappropriate to, to, to begin that with uh, introducing the Achrei Mos and, and the, all that morbidity and connecting that to the entering in the Kadshi Kadashim. So I think as, as follows. 
that the Torah is saying Bizos Yovo Aaron Kohen means to say that when Aaron entered the Kachi Kadashim, Hakadosh Baruch Hu was telling Moshe, "Tell Aaron that it should he should take with him the experience of Achrimos, the experience that was the the most profound and painful experience of his life. Take that along with him. Don't repress it in his mind. Don't suppress it. Don't put it aside and say, okay, now I have to focus on the avodah of, of Yom Kippur. On the contrary, take that experience." It's after they immediately after they died, because it was still fresh for Aaron, take that with you as you enter the Kachi Kadashim. What does that mean, take it with you? What do I mean by that? What I mean to say is that every experience that a person has, whether it's a positive experience or a negative experience, can be used in a in a positive way. Even painful experiences, even even if a person suffers a great deal, there's a way of trans... There's nothing in life that is just no good. Everything can be transformed. So, for example, Aaron lost his children. Perhaps because of that experience, when he went into the Kachik Kadashim and he was davening on behalf of Kla Yisrael, he entered with much greater uh, sensitivity because he understood the relationships between the parents and the children and, 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 the, and, and the close relatives and how important it is. And it was, and it was up to him to, 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 uh, to, to plead with HaKadosh Baruch Hu to grant the Jewish people a, a good year, the coming year. He, take, he, 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 by taking that experience of his own pain, he was able to have far greater sensitivity to the needs of the Jewish people. That's one way that he that he would take take the experience into the Kachi Kadashim. Another way would be that when his children died, it was as if God had shut him down. It, it's like a barrier came between Aharon and Akadosh Baruch Hu. The Chumash says, Vayidam Aaron. When his children died, Aaron was silent. And, then, and Rashi says, or the Ramban says, that it's not that he, he had nothing to say, it's, it's he, rep- he repressed what he had to say. He didn't say what he wanted to say. He, 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 he controlled himself not to say what he knew would not be, it wouldn't come out the right way. What is, what is he going to say? He's going to complain about a Kaddish Baruch Hu. he's going to be bitter. But that emotion was, was unresolved. That trauma of losing his children was not yet resolved. So Moshe Rabbeinu said to Aaron, when you go into the Kachi Kadashim, now you're able, go with that emotion. <laughs> go approach HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Pray to HaKadosh Baruch Hu that you should understand why that had to take place and what the meaning of that was and, and how you could cope with it. We, we, when we go to Beis Avel, we say, the, the one who's the greatest consoler is HaKadosh Baruch Hu. So Moshe is saying, you need to be consoled so encounter HaKadosh Baruch Hu and, and, and pour out your heart to HaKadosh Baruch Hu and that will be an, a, 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 the appropriate time to, to, to relate to HaKadosh Baruch Hu about the passing of your children. And it, it's in the same place. His children died as they entered into the, into the Kachim and the Kachim Kadashim and now Aaron is entering. So it, that's the right time for Aaron rather than Aaron should say, okay, I can't think about it. I'm going to block it out of my mind. No, no on the contrary. Take it with you as you go into the Kachi Kadashim. There's a, and, there, and there's other ways that perhaps Aaron, by taking that experience, it was, it was important. And the point here is that whatever happens to a person molds the individual. And, and, and a person has to use every single experience, both good and, and bad, to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And it, it's true not only of Aaron or Cohen, but it's true for all of us as well. We have lots of things going on in our lives. We have the, the, the happy moments, the, the simchas and the celebrations. Certainly that is a, is, is a motivator for us to, to, to connect to Kaddish Baruch Hu. But the, the, the difficulties, the sad occasions, the tragedies, the failings, the failures, that also could be transformed into a way of connecting to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Bezos, Yovo Aaron, Al HaKadosh, just like Aaron 
took the, 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 the death of his two children into the Kardashian, that's it's a model or a lesson for all of us that we, ha- that we, we, we should not be blocking out painful experiences of our mind and just put it to the side. On the contrary, take those experiences and use them in a positive way. And I, I'll give you an example of what, I, of what I'm thinking from my, my father, all of a sudden, I always, you know, you know, I talk often about my father. He was a great person. My, my father lost his mother when he was, before his bar mitzvah. He was 12 years old and his mother passed away. He, my father was the oldest of three children. He had a younger sister and then he had a, a, a brother who was, it was an infant. I think he was one years old. That was a, an enormous tragedy. And I have a copy of the Hespid that Rabbi Shapiro delivered a Hespid in Seattle. That's where my father lived. And I have, it's in Yiddish, but I, it's, 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 you, could, you could feel the depth of emotion it, just in Rabbi Shapiro's Hespid. Because this, look at the tremendous tragedy, the tragedy for my father and for his brother and his sister and for my grandfather. That experience, I believe, molded my father's life. My father had tremendous sensitivity to people. He was able to relate to, to people's experiences. And I think that that was because he was drawing from his own experience. He understood what it means to, to, to experience a loss. My, I remember growing up in Forest Hills, there were, there were times when I, I was with my father and, and, and the phone rang and, and it was somebody, a young person had passed away. And now he left behind a wife and, and, and orphans. And my father, in a number of instances, became the father of those children. It was like he adopted them. He took care of them. He said Kaddish with them. And I'm certain that that was because my father had his own experiences that sensitized him to the need of, of, um, uh, uh, of feeling the pain of another individual. My father was a very emotional person. My father could cry in a dime. When my father davened, it was tremendous, with tremendous feeling. That also was molded by the experiences that he had when he, when he lost his, his mother at a, a young age. So the, the, the lesson here is for all of us that w- whatever happens in our lives and needs to be transformed into something positive, into something good, it, 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 either by, by deepening our, our, emotion, our religious feelings or by helping us be more sensitive and understanding of, of other, of other in individuals. And this thought, I think, is particularly true. This past year has been an enormously difficult year. There's never been a year like this in our lifetimes. So many people tragically passed away from the COVID epidemic and especially months ago at the, the first few months of the epidemic, every day we heard another terrible basura raw news of another person that was passing away and many great people and great rabbanim and great scholars and great women passed away and people were affected in so many other ways in the trauma of, of being quarantined and isolated and the difficulty in, in wearing masks that's still difficult for people to adjust to and to all the things that and people's parnasa, all these things affected us in a very profound way. We're not the same people as we were before. And in Mir Tzashem, soon this will be over. Soon this will be something of the past. But if we just let it float away like an iceberg down the river someplace, then we will have lost the benefit of the experience. The, we needed to learn something from this experience. And, and every person in his own way, what did we take away? What, what, what new sensitivities? One thing, for example, is don't take things for granted. We take life for granted. We take our parnasa for granted. We take health for granted. Nothing is a given. Don't take for granted all the uh, the luxuries that we have. Remember when we when the pandemic started, you you couldn't go shopping and the and the shelves were empty and we couldn't get basic things, even even something like, like toilet paper. It was not to be found. All the amenities of, of, of that we're used to, which we just take for granted, and and our our grandparents and great grandparents, they didn't have all these luxuries like we do. We take it for granted, and we don't have much appreciation to Kaddish Baruch Hu for allowing us to live in in in, in and have all these well, all these um, modern tools that are beneficial in our lives. 
Don't take things for, for granted. And, and, if, and if you recall, I think all of us, when we, the, the first few weeks when we were quarantined and we dive in by ourselves, I think that was a different experience. It was a, it was a more uh, profound experience. It was it, it, a more authentic experience of davening because there was nobody around and we were all by ourselves and we weren't rushed and there was no place to go. So the, I'm just giving you some examples of things that, that all of us have to think about as we go through life the year of the pandemic and other episodes in our lives, we always need to think about how can I transform this into something positive? How can I use this moving forward as a positive force in my life? What lessons can I learn from this experience that will be helpful in the future? What sensitivities do I take away that will help me in relating to, to other people and understanding the difficulties and the problems that they are going through. So that I think is the is the lesson of this opening phrase of the parsha. It was Achare Mos Shneve in Aram. That it wasn't the, the 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 it was after Aaron's children died. That was directly connected to the experience of going to Kachi Kadashim. Because Bizos Yavo Aaron al Kodesh, Aaron took with him that profound and traumatic experience. And he brought that into the Kachi Kadashim and he used that as a positive force in his service of a Kaddish Baruch Hu.